Hi, Sean here, and welcome to the skill where we're going to be taking a look at status codes, and we're going to see how these things help us to really create web services that are easy to work with from the point of view of the client side. Now, first things first is what are status codes in the first place? Well, status codes are three digit numbers that the server can send back to the client in order to indicate very specific situations. Now, Probably the most commonly known status code out there, even uh, a lot of non-technical folks are familiar with this one, is the status code 404. Now, chances are that you've seen this status code when you try and go to some sort of web page or you follow some kind of broken link from a forum and uh, you find out that that page no longer exists. You see, what this status code 404 means is that whatever resource you're trying to access, whether that's an individual article or whether that's um, some kind of blog post that someone took down or whether that's uh, a user that uh, you're trying to access by their ID that doesn't exist, this status code indicates that uh, whatever you're trying to access was not found. And that's why you'll sometimes see the words uh, not found along with that 404 status code. So let's um, let's kind of dive a little bit deeper into the purpose of status codes because you might be wondering why we need to bother uh, memorizing these three digit numbers. And by the way, all status codes are three digits. Uh, you might wonder why we need to memorize these things when our server is perfectly capable of just sending back strings like not found, right? Why, in other words, why do we bother with those numbers? when our server could just say, I don't know, for example, that everything is good, right? Our server could say, yay, the resource was uh, loaded correctly, something like that, right? I'm not even gonna write all of that out. Well, the fact is that the the reason that these status codes are helpful is that they give us a uh, sort of standardized representation of these um, of these different situations, right? So for not found, Right. If we were if we were just going to try and make our server send back some sort of string or message indicating to the client what happened, you can probably imagine that there's a lot of different ways that we could say that. Right. In addition to not found, we might also say something like uh, doesn't exist. Right. We might say something like uh, what else? Uh, couldn't load resource. Something like that. Um, there's just a lot of different possibilities there because, you know, when we start using English words, when we start using uh, natural language to express what are usually pretty standard situations in, um, you know, client-server interactions, things can start to get a little bit, um, things can start to get a little bit, well, hard to remember, right? In other words, uh, it might not be super easy to remember which option, right, which exact human phrase the server team or the uh, client side uh, is expecting for this situation where you're trying to load a user with an ID that doesn't exist. But you can be pretty darn sure that it's going to have the status code of 404. So again, that's really the uh, the main purpose here of these status codes. And we'll talk about um, we'll basically just go through the list of the most commonly used status codes shortly, but uh, that's what these status codes help us do is standardize things like, um, uh, you know, the handling of responses on the client side, as well as standardizing what types uh, or what, what, what the server says to the client in different situations. So anyway, that's the basic idea of status codes. Again, the next thing that we're gonna take a look at are some of the most commonly used status codes in web services. So I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.